first, we're playing with toys in the water. In Northern California, a bunch of guys are building a one-of-a-kind watercraft. Not only are they very fast on the water surface, they're actually pretty fast under it, too. They even lift off in the air, and for us, that makes for one super cool toy. In a workshop in Redding, California, they are souping up a unique watercraft. This is our sea breacher. It has a uh, 260 horsepower in it at, at the moment. But we are going to boost that up. Because today, they want to push it to extremes. We're basically just bolting on power. So we'll be putting in a bigger supercharger, the power intake, bigger fuel pumps, bigger injectors. We're running out of room. <laughs> Rob Innes. I know about this. And Dan Piazza have been making sea breachers for 14 years, constantly improving their performance. He's the guy that makes these things look pretty. Yeah. So I got to actually try to make it right. He's got to get in there. That's why I'm wearing the pretty suit today. I'm the pretty guy. I'm, I'm the eye candy. The sea breacher uses sea dew technology encased in a porpoise-like hull. Unbelievable. With its snorkel, it's submersible over short distances. Rob and Dan sell them to thrill-seeking customers, starting at $70,000. This one's not for sale. It's their test model, and it's Rob's favorite toy. What we're doing here is kind of experimenting, learning a little bit about, you know, what we achieve by putting on this extra power. But whether or not we actually give it to customers, we'll find out. Our job is to basically abuse these boats. Rob's from New Zealand. He's the daredevil of the duo. Dan's older and maybe a little wiser. I'm a little on the fence about the, the, uh, whole, the whole thing of putting the horsepower in, in this vessel right now. What's the worst that could possibly happen? You could die. <laughs> <laughs> more horsepower doesn't always mean more speed. All the parts have to be matched so they work together. Let's fire this puppy. Wow, man, I think we got some horsepower now. Wow. With 40 extra horsepower on board, they head for nearby Whiskey Town Lake. Dan is going to be the first to try it out. These two joysticks on each side of me, these are, these are for uh, changing your roll. So uh, either you can keep it flat or roll to the left or right. In order to pitch the nose up and down, you use your, your toe heel, and you point your toes to, to go down, and then you push down with your heels to bring up the craft. Enough talk on the dock. Let's go put her in the water. We're going to have some fun now, boys. Let's go racing. Dan makes a speed run. Normally, sea breachers have a top speed of 72 kilometers an hour, but Dan holds back to make sure everything is safe. Wow, that's an unbelievable amount of power. It has, it's got more thrust. A lot more power. Wow. I'm gonna run it wide open. Okay. But Rob hears something he doesn't like. Oh, that's not a good noise. Yeah, that's what it was doing, it's cavitating. Cavitation is when air actually gets sucked into the jet unit, and the more horsepower you get, the more likely it is to happen. So it's kind of like the wheels on a car spinning out. In other words, we've got all the horsepower, but we're not getting traction. So the jet unit's just sucking air in as it takes off. That's where you can hear it go, gig, 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 like that. It's the equivalent of spinning the tires. They're going to have to make some adjustments. See, that didn't cavitate. Dan discovers by working the throttle, he's able to minimize the problem. He makes one more high-speed run. If he breaks it before I get a turn, I'm going to be really mad. Goes flat out and hits 83 kilometers an hour. And finally, it's Rob's turn. Oh, he wants to see some real stunts. This guy will show us. Rob can't wait to open the throttle all the way. Then, the big test. Rob wants to see if he can get more height during a jump. To do a jump, Rob goes underwater using the speed of the water jet and the force of buoyancy to pop up like a cork. Rob skims over the surface of the waves and snakes through some high-speed turns. When he goes underwater, the water jet is still sucking air. But overall, the extra horsepower is giving him extra air time. Damn! There ain't nothing wrong with that boat. Wow. The Sea Breacher has never been more powerful. He performs jump sure. after jump. He decides to try something he's never been able to do before, a mid-air roll. He begins his run underwater. As he jumps, he tries to roll, uh -oh. but the craft lands on its side. 
That's not good. Rob takes a nasty blow to the head. In midair, I go, oh my god. Yeah, yeah, I knew this you were coming down. <laughs> yeah. But if you had your shoulder harness it on. It wouldn't have made any difference. I need a helmet. Hey, Rob, before you knock yourself silly anymore, let's just call it a day. OK, let's take it back. I promise I'll take it super easy. Yeah, right. He's promised that before. Of course, it's a promise Rob can't keep. In the coming weeks, they'll make changes so cavitation won't be a problem. And Rob will wear a helmet, harness, and neck restraint, just like a race car driver. So once again, he can try to do that role. But will this souped-up sea breacher ever be sold to a paying customer? There's no doubt it's a crazy upgrade. We're happy with it. Not for sale yet. This one, I think we're going to keep under wraps for a little while. Maybe it'll just be our toy. We've got to have a toy faster than everyone else. 